Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Reaper blog. Reaper 520 is out today, and it is a great update with a big new feature, the Notation Editor. You can check out the website for the full change log. In this video, I'm gonna go through some of the highlights of this new update. So I'm gonna start off with some of the smaller changes. Then I have a segment prepared by Philip Cartwright, who is going to go into the notation features. The first new feature to show you today is the addition of a trim volume envelope. So if we go over to a track and click on the envelope button, we've got volume envelope, pre-effects volume envelope. We also have this new trim volume envelope. And as you can see here, you can't arm this envelope. This is a way to augment what's already written to your main volume envelope. The volume pre-effects envelope is what's coming into the track. And if we make alterations here, we'll actually see our waveforms change. Let me grab a sample to drop in here, and um, and you can see that. The volume pre-effects envelope is the first gain stage, and if we make a change here, you can see our waveform actually updates along with that. So that's one way we can modify things coming into the mixer that are too hot. Another way is the item volume control, or double-clicking and setting the volume here. All those things affect the waveform that we see and the volume of the signal coming into the track into our effects chain. At the end of the effects chain is the fader. So that's this knob here, or in the mixer, that's our fader. So this new trim volume comes after that. And we have the options in the action list to actually apply changes that we make to the trim envelope to our volume envelope or vice versa. So if I just draw in some sort of volume change here, the fader is going to move to follow this, and that's changing the, this volume knob. Now if we make a time selection and bring this up, in this section it's going to uh, adjust all of these envelope points by this value. So if we play this back, it's going to reflect all these changes we have here. We can bring it all the way down. So why is this helpful? Well, there's a lot of times we want to audition a new change or maybe do a, a second pass of fine tuning. And we might want to audition that without committing the effect. So uh, rather than drawing in this new volume change like this, we can put it on this trim volume envelope and we can bypass it if we don't like it. And if we look in the action list and scroll down to track, and there's these three new options here, apply trim envelope to volume envelope and clear trim envelope, apply volume envelope to trim envelope and clear volume envelope, and swap volume envelope and trim envelope. Got this track selected. I can click this one and you see the trim envelope disappeared. We got the settings adjusted to map to that. I'm gonna undo, uh, apply volume to the trim. Okay, we have both combined again, but we have no volume envelope visible anymore. It's just the trim envelope. And we can swap these if we want. It's a pretty cool feature. It's probably not something you'll need every day, but it's super nice to have for those times that you need it. If we go up to the view menu and show our master track in the track control panel area, there's a new layout for this master track uh, when we're in the default theme. So if we go to layouts and master track panel, we have this new one, small full meter, which gives us a nice big meter in the project. This adjusts based on the width and height of this. So if we have it kind of narrow, it's going to be a vertical meter. If we have it rather wide, then we have it as a horizontal meter. But this also works great for multi-channel. So if we have this as a 20 channel track, we have 20 meters visible on this track. So there we're just seeing tracks one and two. If I set this to eight and nine. We see it in the middle. 
set this to 1718, see it over here. And that's just a really helpful thing. Speaking of multi-channel tracks, we have this new WIGWARE multi-channel VU meter. So we just go to the JS folder, type in WIG. We've got this new multi-channel VU meter. And with any JS plugin, you can resize them as needed. So got this track ch playing on uh, 1718, I think. And which means we need to set this to 18 channels at least. And now we see it here. So once again, something that you might not need all the time, but if you're working with surround sound, or if you're using multi-tambral virtual instruments, having a VU meter might be really helpful for you. It's always nice to have new plugins in Reaper. Another new plugin is the MIDI delay. Basically all this does is adjust your MIDI that's recorded on the track a bit later. So before it goes into your virtual instrument, delay it by milliseconds, quarter notes, samples. We can delay only one channel, um, or we can delay the MIDI bus. So for the times that you need to delay your MIDI to sync something or for a specific effect, it's often preferable to use a plugin to do that rather than adjusting all the recorded MIDI. To add a five millisecond offset to every MIDI note in your MIDI might be kind of annoying, and there's no easy way to toggle that back and forth. This plugin will solve that. In the MIDI editor, we have new mouse modifier. Mouse modifier to select all later notes of the same pitch. Mouse modifier to select all notes in measure. So let's look in our Reaper preferences for MIDI note and left click. We have this option here, shift option, which would be shift alt on, on Windows. Select all notes in measure. So using shift option, we can select all the notes within a measure. So I'll select this one and then option shift and click that. It'll select between bar 22 and bar 23. Click here between 25 and 26. Select notes and all later notes. So this is a great one if you if you program something and you realize that it should have been over by one beat or something like that after a certain note. Um, so we can use command option. That's control option on PC. We click this one and everything after that is now selected. So we can shift that over, grab this one, shift that over, grab this one, and now everything else is supposed to be up to things like that. And there's another mouse modifier that hasn't been assigned by default. Select note and all later notes of the same pitch. So using the mouse modifier shift command option, that's shift control alt on Windows, we can select a note and everything after it that's the same pitch. For video features, they've added an extension to allow VST plugins to access video. For now, I don't think there are any video plugins available. This presents an opportunity for developers to make something really cool for working with video in Reaper. Uh, if you're a developer, please make something. I would love to try it out. Another feature for video is the option of exporting multi-channel video files. So we can have a six-channel file for 5.1 mix and choose our MPEG encoder, and it'll work. The last thing on the list is Notation Editor. I'm not an expert on Notation. I had Philip Cartwright from the forum prepare something for me that will demonstrate all these new features with the Notation. Just a really brief overview of it, but he did a great job, and I have to thank him for helping out with this. With the release of Reaper 5.2, Users now have the option to view and edit MIDI through a notation editor. Open a MIDI item in Reaper's MIDI editor. Go to Actions and search for Notation. Users can use keyboard shortcut Alt 4 or click on the action. Users can also assign the notation display action to a button on the toolbar. Notice that the score will wrap from one line to the next when only one track is selected. However, the score will become continuous from left to right if more than one track is selected. Editing behavior is very similar to the piano roll. The same key selection options in the piano roll apply key signatures to the notation view. Additionally, adding, deleting, or selecting notes 
can all be done in the notation view as you would do in the piano roll. To zoom in, simply use the mouse wheel. Use the mouse wheel while holding the Alt key to move left and right. Use the mouse wheel while holding Control and Alt to move up and down. There is also an option to toggle between grid and musical spacing. Grid spacing functions like the piano roll in that two eighth notes take up the same graphical space as one quarter note, whereas musical spacing is more like traditional engraving where extra graphical space is needed for clarity. Reaper offers several visualization quantization options to improve score clarity. Users can select two complementary methods to visually quantize the score. First, users can select the display quantization. This method adjusts the apparent start time relative to the grid. So, for example, a 16th note that is slightly off the grid will still appear to be a 16th note on the downbeat as opposed to a 32nd note on an offbeat. You can also set a minimum display note length. Essentially, notes will be rounded to the closest value selected. If you select an eighth note, for example, you would not see any 16th notes in your score. Keep in mind that the underlying MIDI duration does not change, just the display of the note. Use these two options together to simplify the visual score, but remember, the underlying MIDI does not change. These settings can be applied globally or per track. Reaper also includes an automatic tuplet detection feature. Try toggling this option when recording tuplets. Users can also insert or manually adjust tuplets of varying ratios. Users also have the option to attach text and dynamics through the insert notation option. Also, users can enter lyrics, create slurs, add articulations, ornaments, and pedal marks. Please note that the pedal marks currently trigger MIDI CC64 values. The notation view also supports up to three voices per staff, default, high, and low, with an option to automatically voice overlapping notes. The notation view also supports beaming groups through the tempo window. Users can select less common accidentals such as double sharps and double flats. The default clef can be set per track, and the clef can be changed at the start of any measure. Furthermore, users can select from several transposition options. For percussion tracks, users can select from two percussion clefs and a variety of note heads. Tracks can be bracketed by organizing your tracks into folders. Each folder group creates a bracket. Folders also allow users to quickly add or remove groups of tracks to or from the notation view. This just scratches the surface of the new notation editor. Many functions that are already included in the piano roll can be used and customized to assist with note entry and various other tasks. I encourage you to dig into the new notation features as well as explore some of the older piano roll features to better leverage this new tool. To end this video, I will show the notation view in full screen mode, undocked, with a score written for brass and percussion. Reaper 5.20 is available today. It's a free update as always. Try it out for yourself. Try out these new notation features. It's pretty cool to have this in Reaper now. Once again, thank you to Philip for preparing that segment for us. 
Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more.